Welcome! In this video, we're going to cover a few basic tips and tricks for how to keep on track with your game development and kind of the process of developing a game. Uh, we're just going to cover the very start of the game development. I think in the future we'll probably make some more videos on a few more tools that you can use, but we're going to be doing broad strokes and things to help you get started on, on your path to develop a game. A lot of these tips and tools come from my background in IT and project management, as well as being a dungeon master for many, many D&D games. When you're working on a project by yourself or with some friends, you have to wear a bunch of different hats. You have to be both a you know, game developer, an art designer, and crucially, a project manager. And so hopefully these tools that I'm gonna provide for you, um, or these tips I'm gonna share with you are going to help you out with that process. The very first thing I wanna to talk to you about is the core of any development project, and that is the scope. Um, in game development, your scope is like your compass. It kind of guides your every decision that you make. Um, and for solo or small teams, your scope should read you know, like a tweet. It needs to be short, simple, and especially at the beginning, vague. Um, for instance, in our other tutorial series, we are going over how to create a deck building roguelike card game. And so our scope statement is going to be something pretty simple, something along the lines of create a deck building roguelike with elemental affinities. You know, so we have our you know action which we're, we're going to create this game we have some specifics to the deck building roguelike and then something else that's going to make it a little bit more unique and that's going to be that we're going to focus on elemental affinities so the next thing we want to talk about is when to and when not to change your scope so changes in scope can be both a blessing and a curse it's okay to make changes to your scope when you're responding to feedback or when you're streamlining a feature. Whenever you are making, whenever you're making an improvement to your core ideals with this uh, game, when it's not okay is when you're constantly adding, you know, just one more feature, just one more thing that you think your game needs. You don't really want to be adding things to your scope. You really want to be refining your scope. Um, adding things onto it constantly is this thing called scope creep, and it is a project killer. To stay on track with your scope, it's great to use certain tools. Like for me, I use OneNote a lot for keeping track of my ideas and my scope. Um, in fact, it's what I am using for the tutorial series I'm go going through right now. Um, and uh, for like keeping track of tasks and milestones, I use the software Asana, which is a project management software, which I think is uh, really fun and easy to use. There's a lot of project management softwares out there, so just do some research and find one that fits your needs. Along those lines of using project management for your uh, game development process is we want to talk about you know, how to set up tasks. When you start with game development, it's really easy to set up tasks and goals and things like that that don't really help motivate you and help not don't really help keep track of your work so the first thing we want to talk about is the difference between a task and a milestone so milestones are going to be these things that are huge right they can take days or weeks or months sometimes even years to complete and they're going to be these very big you know, goals for your project that you're not going to meet right away. And so it's very easy to just write this down and say, all right, this is what I'm working for. This is what I want to complete. But this is not going to be what's going to motivate you day to day to work on your project. You know, because this is going to be so far in the future, at least for me, it's going to be so far in the future that's not really going to motivate you. Um, you know, I'm talking about these things for motivation. That's really what tasks are for. Because when you're working by yourself, you have to motivate yourself, right? 
And so that's really what our key use is for these tasks and milestones. Now, when you look at tasks, they're much smaller. And I like to divide my tasks into two different categories. We have our dailies and our to-dos. Now, the reason why I have these split up into these two different sections is, like I spoke about before, it's all about motivation. So our dailies, they're here to motivate us to make daily progress on our project. They need to be easy to accomplish, like ridiculously easy to accomplish. Something along the lines of work on the game today, write some code today, research this today. They're going to be for that day, and it's going to be some kind of easy to accomplish uh, task for you. The reason why I like to do this and the reason why it's a good practice I'm going to go into a little bit more later on in the video, um, but I've, like I've already mentioned, it's all, all about motivation. The next thing is to-dos. To-dos are all about staying organized, right? So they're going to be very specific, but we're not going to have a time limit. But the reason why we don't have time limit is because as a solo or small team game developer, having that time limit can put a lot of pressure on you. So I prefer to not have those time limits. So that way it's more of like, these are things that still need to get done in the project. So I'm gonna work on these things as it just helps me keep track of what needs to be worked on. But I'm not gonna say when I'm working on it or when I'm gonna complete it. So we have already kind of covered our first to-do, which is, you know, our scope. You know, but when we're working on our game, there, your first to-do is going to be working on your scope. But your very next to-do is actually going to be um, iteration. Now, if you're new to game development or you haven't worked on it very long, you might not quite understand what I mean by iteration. In An iteration in its basic sense is a working game loop. Now that does not mean it has to be in the game. That doesn't mean it has to be on the computer even. It could be a, you know, paper model that you've set up, you know? It's just something that works that you can go through your game's loop. And what I mean by game loop is gonna be like, kind of like your core path that your players are gonna take through your game. For instance, The Witcher, if you ever play The Witcher games. You're going to start with a quest. Then you're going to get details about the quest. Then you're going to prepare for the quest. Then you're going to go do the quest. Then you're going to turn the quest in. And then you're going to get some kind of reward for that quest. And then you're going to use those rewards to go get more quests. And get better rewards and so on and so forth. So that's kind of your game loop. So with it all being said, you know, an iteration can be as simple as a paper prototype of your game's mechanics or a basic Unity scene. Your first iterations need to be very simple. The whole goal of an iteration is all about evolving your game loop, improving it each time. And how do you improve it? You can go out and you're gonna get feedback. Now there's a lot of ways to get feedback. You can ask family, friends, people that you know that enjoy playing games, just have them come over and take a look at your game and kind of go through the game loop with them and kind of get feedback from them what their thoughts are. Now, if you want feedback from me, I would be more than happy to provide you with feedback on your games and your game loop and your durations. Um, if you want to, you can join our Discord and we have a channel in the Discord where you can ask for feedback and I'd be more than happy to do that with you if I have the time and resources to be able to accomplish that. So there is really just one more topic that I want to cover in this video. Like I said, we'll, we'll be making some more in the future, uh, but what I want to cover next is what to expect of yourself. Solo and small team game development is a, if done right, very liberating process. It's just you 
your skills, and your resources. However, uh, you know, like I spoke about before, for me, this is a career that I want, but I'm not currently in. So there's a, obviously a lot of pressure there to succeed. Um, so I have to constantly remind myself to ease up, relax, and enjoy what I'm doing. I'm sure it can be the same for a lot of you as well um, who are watching this video. So let's just talk about that for a little bit. I want you to picture in your mind a meter. This meter is a combination of energy and motivation. It's easy to think and expect that when you wake up in the morning, this meter is already full, but that is rarely, rarely the case. So most days you're already starting at a deficit. Then as you go through the day, different tasks, obstacles, and experiences are gonna drain it. This isn't a bad thing, it's just life, right? When you are able to work on your game, your meter could have a lot left in it or it could be nearly empty. Regardless of where it is, you need to understand it's okay. If you can't get that one thing done with a game that you wanted to, um, you know, that's okay. The game will still be there tomorrow. If you find yourself avoiding working on the game, ask yourself why that is, what it is exactly that you're avoiding, and if there's something else that you can work on instead. For me, it helps to think of it in terms of if this was someone else, if I, if I was at someone else and I knew they went through today what I went through today, what would I be expecting of them? What progress would I be expecting them to work on today? You know, it's an easy way to realize when I'm actually being lazy and when I just don't have anything left in the meter. You know, so just be easy on yourself. Understand that this is a process and it's not gonna happen instantly. That's about all I have for now. Um, I may expand on this more in the future. Actually, you know, I do have plans to expand on this more in the future. I have a few other things that I want to bring up, but I don't feel like it exactly fit in this video. Um, next thing for you, what you'll want to do is just kind of research a little bit into project management because it's going to really help you uh, develop your game at a more regular pace. That's going to provide you a lot of tools and strategies that will help you with your game development process. If you like this video, Please subscribe and look at my other videos for more like it. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.